All right, we've got most of our gameplay core done, so we want to start focusing more on the entire gameplay loop, like the main menu and like game over screen, stuff like that, where it's an actual playable game. Uh, so I just wanted to share one quick thing I, I use in order to make this a whole lot easier because it's going to involve a lot of scene switching. Uh, so I, let me, let me just show you it working right now. Uh, so if we start this, it's going to load the main menu scene. It's going to keep all this other stuff because it, they're singletons and I got don't destroy and load and they're persistent. Um, so we've got our beautiful main menu screen and we click load gameplay. It unloads the main menu screen and it loads the gameplay and we are in the game. Uh, so let me show you how that works. It's really simple as far as the, or wh what I want to show you is the script that I use in order to just attach to any button that I want to, uh, use to load and unload a scene. So let me show you that or let me show you first where it lives. It just, you just put it on the button that you want to um, do the scene, that, that you want to activate the scene switch. And then you just enter in the name of the scene uh, that you want to load and the name of the scene that you want to unload. Uh, also make sure that it's in the build settings, that, that the scenes you want to load and unload are in the build settings. Um, yeah, let me show you the script. So the switch scene button. Uh, see, we've got our references to the scenes we want to load and the scene we want to unload. It's got a reference to the button. It lives on the same game object uh, as the button. So you just do get component. And then here's where the magic happens. Uh, you would normally do it right here, like in the inspector. Uh, you would drag in the game object that's got the, the script and the function that you want to call. And then you would, you know, click and select it here. This does the same thing. It does the same exact thing. Uh, button dot on click dot add listener. And then you just enter in the method that you want to run whenever the button is clicked. Uh, notice I've got it broken up into two separate uh, methods. We got one coroutine and one just standard void method. Uh, the reason, not, reason you have to do this is because you can't call a coroutine up here. You can only call this a standard method. Uh, so you call that method, which calls a coroutine. Now, the reason we got to put it in a coroutine is because we have to wait for the scene to load before we can unload the scene we're in. It will not unload the scene you're in unless another scene has been loaded. Uh, and that's what this yield return means. This yield return means wait until you run this, wait until you load this scene before moving on and run and running this line which unloads the scene. And that is it. That is, that's it. So now, so now I can reuse the script anywhere for any button. If I want to switch scenes, all I gotta do is drag that script onto the button that I want to activate the scene switch and then just make sure I've got the names of the scenes correct and it should work. If you found this video useful, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe because that really does help me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and duck bless.